He's going to be calling uh, the World Cup for Super Sport and an alternative radio station as well. Sky Sport, you idiots, you dumped him. Justin Marshall joins us. What is it? One eighteen time. Justin, well, I mean, you know, the timing couldn't be any any better, could it? Normally we talk on a Monday, um, but here it is, the, the major story in New Zealand sport at the moment, which has blown up over the weekend. The CEO, Mark Robinson, saying, you know, it is not fit for purpose, the NPC. What is your initial reaction when you heard those comments? Well, first of all, disappointment, Marty, because... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. I, I, I came to the system, club rugby, onto Southland, um, and then got my opportunity at Canterbury. And I, I really feel that's the, that's the infrastructure of New Zealand rugby that we have, a niche that no one else in the world does have, that we can get club players into provincial sides and, and turn them, if they are good enough, into professionals. And um, the fact that the format is struggling is not a surprise. I think we've all seen it bleeding in recent years. Um, but the fact that they are now scratching their head how to fix it is a bit worrying for me. I think it should always be a huge part of our game. It's really important to inspire club rugby players to take that next step should they have a good season and play for their province. Look, uh, you know, it was so disappointing to me. The man's been in the job for four years. It, is, it has been obvious to everyone who loves the game in this country that, you know, that the NPC needs help. It needs, it needs something and yet he kind of acts as though this is a major surprise. What the hell's happened? You know, surely as the CEO, the responsibility comes back to you as the guy in charge, doesn't it? Well, I think obviously, you know, he's only inherited it and he's inherited a problem. Um, it, you know, there's no doubt that it's been going on for longer than a couple of years, that, that, that ever since Super Rugby um, decided that we would play two rounds and, um, you know, that there's just more volume in Super Rugby now. You know, there, there was going to have to be some format that suffered, and unfortunately, that's been the NPC. They've messed around with it too much, trying the two different um, structures, you know, with the top tier and bottom tier and all that sort of carry on. I was always a bit dubious about that. I didn't like it. Um, I didn't feel that that enabled some provinces to, to learn to grow. Yeah, it might not be nice getting 20 or 30 points put on you, but you figure out why and, and get better. Um, you know, so, yeah, that, that was something that I wasn't a big fan of. Now they've changed the format. They're not happy with it again. Look, I have sympathy um, simply because I know that, that they are working really hard to try and keep everything together. And Silver Lake obviously has injected money. But, you know, the deal was all around making sure that with Silver Lake we got the provinces on board. And now it's like, oh but it's not working and we're going to have to scrap this and do that or look at it and whatever and it's a bit, bit concerning, isn't it? Look, when he turns around and he says, you know, the provincial unions have got to stop concentrating on high performance and start focusing on community rugby, well, that's all... I mean, these are all just management speak words. Explain how you meant to do this. If I'm the CEO of a provincial union, what am I selling, Mark? Exactly tell me what I've got to sell if I don't have my NPC side to sell. What else is there to sell? Yeah, I agree with you. No, I, I don't don't agree with the community rugby. Um, I, I certainly feel that that is important and it's a part of the program um, and should always be. But what you've got to do is inspire players to win and be winners and win titles and win and, and go out and challenge for the Rangfordy Shield and win the Rangfordy Shield. Like we all play the game because yes, we enjoy it, but equally because we want to get success out of it. We want to grow. You want to celebrate with your friends. You want to have that camaraderie. You want to have that satisfaction of achieving, you know, and it might not be a title, but a win might be making the semis, you know, for a team like Southam, for example. You know, so I feel that, you know, we, we, we need to just continue to create a format that makes the players want to go out and play for their province, makes them want to be successful uh, and, and motivates them to play. And, yeah, they've got to look at the whole infrastructure. They've got to have a look at why there are not people turning up to going, but the current economy will be a big part of that, you know, so... Mate, I'm really interested. Now, you'll probably be able to help me here because I, I know how passionate you are about Wellington, but I've never been to the hut ground where this Ranfurly Shield game is this weekend. All my time as a player, as a commentator involved in the game, it's the first time I'm going to the game. I think they're offering $10 tickets um, for people to go along. Um, pretty much only standing, 
Is there a grandstand there? Well, I mean, well, okay, define grandstand. Look, okay, so, you know, so if you're driving around Matoto, mate, and you drive past a bit of an old rickety <laughs> race course and there's a bit of a kind of a yeah. scaffold, that's the kind of grandstand it is. Justin, it's a fabulous ground. I went and watched the Phoenix play there a few years back when they couldn't use the Caketon. I watched an FPC game out there the other weekend. I think uh, Wellington yeah. were playing Counties Monaco. Um, you'll be standing, you know, the, the spectators will be right behind the rope. They'll be screaming and spitting and snarling. You can smell the hot dogs. <laughs> the players will love it, mate, yeah. because it's like, it's, you know, look, it's the same as the only one domain. You know, this is what I believe that start local again. You know, I, I know that yeah. you're big time. You went down, you know, to one of your rugby club celebrations. I did the Kura 125th. You know, the communities are interested in rugby. They're interested in their own players. They're interested in the club side of it. From there, you build the NPC side, but you make it absolutely local. Start it small again, get two or 3,000 along, get the kids' bouncy castles, get something out there, get some food tracks, get yep. people coming along, make it free, make it an event people want to go to in the afternoon. That's how you start again. And then when it starts building up, build it up from there. Mate, here's, look, here's, here's, here's an incredible stat for you. Last financial year, the union spent $277 million. Now, that's $100 million more in expenses than last year. $100 million more, and yet the NPC's stuffed, and they don't know why, and there's no money for it. I, I'm sit sitting here at a loss going, you're running this bloody company. How can you spend that much extra money, and this competition is dying? Yeah, well, that's fascinating. I didn't know that, and that is, again, concerning. Um, you know, when you spend money, you want to spend it so we, so that we make the game better and we grow the game. And equally, they, gr they grow their business and make it a good, profitable business. And if they're spending that sort of money and still complaining about the fact that things aren't right, then it makes you wonder where that, where that revenue is going. Um, but, mate, I absolutely concur with what you said. I think getting, getting people back interested in the game because you're not hitting them too hard in the pocket. You're giving them real close access to the players, you know, like in, in big stadiums when there's only 3,000 people going along, it's empty, it doesn't feel like it's got uh, any character, it doesn't feel like there's a, there's a great atmosphere, and you're, well, hopefully they can't spit on them, like you said, <laughs> they can reach out, and, reach out and touch them at the weekend, but, I, you know, take, take the games, you know, into the, into the community, because that's how you grow the community as well. Get these players going out there. Yes, it's only three or four thousand, but the ground is full, and it'll feel like fifteen thousand. There you go. And 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 start to make the players love playing again and love playing in their community and being well supported. And again, people can afford to go. Justin Marshall is with us. Eighty-one tests for the All Blacks, and he'll be calling uh, the Rugby World Cup for Super Sport amongst other media organisations in France. You've got that Ranfilly Shield game. You'll love it out there, mate. You'll love it at Hutt Park. It's <laughs> it's a different kind of crowd. And But the great thing about it is, is it's real, you know, and I reckon the players will love it. Yeah. They'll, you know, they'll, because you can hear, you know, if you're passing the ball slow, you can hear Bozo, Big big Loud Foghorn, Devlin on the sideline yelling at you about it, mate. That's, that's part <laughs> of the fun, isn't it? It is. And I think, you know, again, that, that just engages everybody. Um, and to take a significant game like this to that ground, I think um, yeah, that's what we need to start thinking about. Don't think about getting rid of provinces or you know, putting teams down into a different tier so they're battling away. Just find a way to re enthuse the players. You know, like man, I, I did the Southland game um, a couple of weeks ago, and you know, there was a pretty good crowd there, and they had some of the legends of all the centurions of Southland rugby. Great to see them all there. And Southland got stuck in, mate, and against Waikato, who uh, you know, going to be top of the table, no doubt. They're a really good side, and and they only, you know, lost the game in the last few minutes. So, you know, there, there, there is the ability to compete. You've just got to create the environment to make them compete and make them competitive and make them, you know, dig deep and 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 give them the tools um, that they need and put the other team out of their comfort zone. Like, take the bloody game to Matara next time, South, and holy moly. Yeah. I'll tell you what, mate. Those Waikato boys will be walking into a place they've never been to before. But, yeah, let's think outside the box at how we can bring everybody back into the mix and get, and get the community involved. Is there room, a couple more questions on this, we'll move on, because I want to ask you about Intermac and the fact that he's not playing now for France at the World Cup. So, you know, Pollard has gone for South Africa. This changes, you know, it changes everything for those teams. 
Is there room for Super Rugby as we've got it with two rounds in Australian teams? Four of those aren't competitive out of their five and NPC. And I know that the union would be saying, oh, no, no, we need this. This is our revenue. Look, they're not selling Super Rugby. Their competition doesn't get watched anywhere else in the world. And I think at some stage, somebody's got to be brave about this and go, okay, what attracts New Zealanders to it first and foremost? Because that's what we've lost. So that's what we've got to get back. That's to me, that's my idea to start with. How to re, how to re, reinvigorate it here in this country and then you look at selling it elsewhere. But if you don't get the support here for it, you, Justin, I'll tell you something else, mate, and you probably aren't aware of this. But on the weekend, the official All Blacks Twitter account tweeted out this tweet and it was a picture of Rowan Atkinson bored on the side of the road going to sleep as Mr Bean and it had a thing, this is what it feels like when the All Blacks aren't playing rugby. Well, hang on a second. Your National Provincial Championship's going on at the same time. Why aren't you celebrating that? Why aren't you trying to get people to go and watch that? You're acting as though there's no other rugby in this country apart from the All Blacks. Now, if that's what the National Administration thinks, why the hell should we as spectators and fans be interested? Oh, look, I, first and foremost, I love the NPC format and I, and I, and I love our provincial championship. And, and I think the, 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 the rationale behind what Mark Robbins is trying to say is he's trying to find that balance that you just spoke about and, and get people along to the games now, get them enthusiastic, you know, um, you know what made people want to watch. And, and I, I guess the biggest problem at the moment is volume. And, and I guess they have that volume because they are feeling that that volume... Um, creates revenue and, and and it makes the, the whole business tick. But I don't know. I think <clears throat> I've been a bit of a fan um, of uh, decreasing the you know, the volume of games in Super Rugby. And I love Super Rugby as well. And I think we've we've got a great competition there. But you know that that uh, double banger when those New Zealand teams are playing each other twice. When when the um, I think it was the Crusaders only played the Blues once in the round robin. Uh, this year, you know, there was a huge crowd because there wasn't that, 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 that return match. And, yeah, maybe they need to look at seeing how they can get people along because they don't then pick and choose what they want to go to because they know they're going to get a second bite at the cherry. It's like, well, if I don't go and watch them play the Chiefs this year, I won't see it for another year yeah. because they won't be back. So maybe that's an idea. But, um, well, getting some you know, good brains around... We all need to shake up. Look, and, you know, you've got... I don't know what the board does. I don't know what the 200 people employed at NZRHQ do. I don't know what their marketing promotions strategy is. I don't know what their business plan is. But you'd actually think there's a lot of people who care about the sport in this country, love this game, who, who, who want to see it thrive and survive. Get some good brains around yeah, a table. Put your egos aside and get on with bloody fixing it. All right, let's move on to the World Cup then, mate. Intermac. How big a deal is this, Justin? I'm trying to sort of figure out, okay, you know, if we lost our best first five, we're really lucky. We got Bowden and we've got Damo, but this guy misses. How big a deal is that for France? Yeah, it is quite a big deal. And you touched on Honoré Pollard, who I think is equally as big a loss. It's like you throw into the mix of Ireland we lose Johnny Sexton. You know, those those sides have players that are capable to set in, um, step in, but, yeah, them, them missing is not easy. And obviously, Owen Farrell's got to go through a judicial... Yeah, yeah process are well after his high tackle at the weekend and how, who knows how long they're going to be without him they do have Smith as well but yeah look he's, he's Intermac is a massive blow it's not only because of the fact that he, he is their number one choice when he steps into that jersey but it's his combination with Dupont and, and, and that combination is really really good they played age group rugby through the under 20s They've played a lot together. They've got great synergy. They know each other. They're the game drivers for that really exciting back line. Um, and they have that, they have, they have that um, natural, I, I guess, instinct between the two of them. Decision-making comes easy. So, look, uh, I would imagine um, Genevieve is, is the next player that will probably step in there. Now, he's a quality player. He can play fullback. He can play 10. But he doesn't have that time in the jersey. Um, as a combination with Dupont um, that, that Intermac does. So, yeah, massive loss for France. Devlin. Yes! Yes! Can they do it? The Platform.